Hi, today we're looking at photographing sand martins. Now years ago whenever I did sand martins I did them on sand quarries and the big disadvantage of that is the cliff faces tend to be quite high so I'd have to put a scaffolding tower up which is a, a lot of work. Then in more recent years I've realised you don't need to do that. They actually nest along our rivers quite frequently and if you can find a suitable spot you can photograph them from ground level. This is just my beauty of single person hide, just put it down on the ground. Sand martins will accept a hide very, very quickly. They take no notice of it. In fact, often you can just sit on a stool out in the open and sand martins will carry on flying into their nest chambers. But I prefer to do it from a hide. But I've only been here five minutes and I realise that a little bit further along the bank, the sand martins keep landing in a bush repeatedly. Now you can put perches up for sand martins, you can put a branch into the bank sticking out and they will land on that from time to time, but it's not reliable. They might go two or three days without landing on it, then they have a 10-15 minute period where they're landing on it all the time. It's uh, they're very erratic when it comes to landing on perches. So I'm going to make use of this, I'm going to move the hide about 30 metres in that direction so I can reach this bush that they're landing on. The only downside is here the floor is quite dry. Down there it's very muddy and it's that horrible sticky mud that you sink into. But uh, I think it's worth it. This is not an opportunity you get every day. So I'm going to move the hide that way. Well I've moved the hide. I'm in very soft mud now. My stool is sinking into the mud. But I'm in position. Just got to hope they come back. The first bird to arrive was a pied wagtail which would keep me entertained while I was waiting for the San Martins. And it was a very smart looking pied wagtail too. They can be a bit on the scruffy side, but this bird had very nice markings. And just one stills picture taken at 3,200th of a second, mainly because I was waiting for the San Martins and wanted a faster shutter speed for them. Very noticeable that the wagtail was feeding by leaping up the cliff face. The insects were higher up, so it'd go up, try and grab an insect, then come back down to the muddy floor. And it was doing this repeatedly. But then I was very pleased to see a yellow wagtail come and join it and I'm much more interested in photographing yellow wagtails. Pied wagtails are quite easy and, and numerous, so you get a lot of pictures of pied wagtails easily. Not so easy to do yellow. And when they first arrive in the spring, the males were in wonderful bright plumage. This bird is so yellow. As the spring progresses, they do fade a little. I have had the odd comment about my YouTube videos that I tend to look a bit scruffy in them, from my wife actually. But what do you expect if you're working in these conditions? You're going to have mud on your trousers. Oh, yellow wagtail's back. It was feeding high up on the banks, just as the pied wagtail was doing. And just a couple of stills pictures. Again with that faster shutter speed than really needed, 3200 for a second, the lens wide open. The San Martins did come back after a few minutes. They're not very nervous birds, you can sometimes walk up to them when they're perched on fences or fence posts. They can be very approachable. But once you see some landing on twigs like this, it's best to make use of it, because they might not come back to this same spot for several days. Joined by a swallow. Be 
because I have a nice blue sky behind the birds I don't have to worry about the exposure. If it was a white sky I'd have to start overexposing. I'm enjoying the session but this is very uncomfy. The stool keeps sinking into the mud, my feet are sinking into the mud and uh, I know I'm going to have a problem when I get out that everything's going to be covered in mud. San Martins don't spend that much time on the edge of the nest hole. They tend to fly straight in without pausing and the best time to photograph them is when the young are fledging. The young come to the edge of the hole, then they fly off and unlike most species they return to the nest hole and you'll get the youngsters sitting outside there and the parents feeding them and you get nice family groups like that. This is early on in the season so there weren't any youngsters about at this point. I'm using the Sony A1 with the 200 to 600 zoom and the shutter speed is a constant 3200th of a second in case a bird does a wing stretch. The aperture is wide open, I very rarely close down the aperture because it's not a very fast lens to start with, so it's just the ISO that is varying. And on the day it varied from 1600 ISO up to 6400 and it's very hard to tell the difference between them. The Sony A1 is, is brilliant on noise levels. I think I've had the best of it. The activity has slowed right down. I only ever come to this spot first thing in the morning because by 9 or 10 o'clock the sun has gone right round the side and it's very strong side lighting. It's only first thing in the morning that it comes up river and lights the birds up along the bank here. So I usually get here about 6.30 and leave just after 9. But it's gone very hazy as well. So I think I'll pack up. Also I've only got one battery for this Sony A1 so far and it's almost flat and I've only got 434 frames left on these very expensive cards. So I haven't got a backup card yet either. So everything's very muddy. So I'm carrying it out one at a time and where the camera is that's a fishing platform so I've got one dry area where I can put all my stuff and then start washing the tripod legs in the water. So I've got most of the mud off me, or off my equipment, just my wellingtons are still need sorting out. But I'm just standing here now watching where the hide was, where I was sitting in the mud. I've obviously left a lot of disturbance there, the mud is all churned up. And the sand martins are coming down there, I mean, in, in a bunch, as if they're feeding in that one spot. Never noticed that before, so perhaps next time I come I'll bring a spade with me and turn the mud over just in front of the hide and maybe I'll get something different. It's been over a month since I filmed that first part of this film. The month of May 2021 has been so wet the water level in the river has been high right up to the bank which is the way the sand martins prefer it. They like to nest on a bank where the water comes right up to it. It gives them protection but no good for photography I couldn't get the hide up down here. But it's now into June got a lovely sunny morning so I've just been doing flight photography. One of the first opportunities I've had to do flight with this new Sony A1 and the 200 to 600 lens in good light. I've been using it in poor light, nice to do it in a blue sky day and um, it's been very successful. Not much sign of nesting activity. One or two birds have flown into the nest holes but not many and I think I know the reason for it. The San Martins were mobbing something in the grass and I was getting excited thinking there was a, a stoat or weasel there but it was just a grey squirrel. But what was a grey squirrel doing here? It's a long way to the nearest tree, at least a hundred metres. There's a hedgerow but the trees aren't very big in that hedgerow. I think this grey squirrel has found these San Martin nests and is probably taking the eggs. I didn't see it happen 
but I wouldn't be surprised. So I didn't get much activity at the nest holes and I really just concentrated on flight pictures. Not so easy to do flight from a hide. It's the restricted viewing and you can't really swing your lens as much as you would outside of a hide. But they were performing well and the Sony A1 is quite amazing at locking on to even small birds like this in flight. The fact that it has such a clear and flickerless viewfinder helps be able to keep the birds in the frame. Thanks for watching.